If you live in the plains, you are probably familiar with the vast stretches of plain land. In contrast, if you live in the hilly region, the rugged terrain with mountains and valleys may be more of a common feature. You must have seen these while traveling and you may have even marveled at some of these wondrous formations. But have you ever thought about how they came to be? If you have, then get ready to have all your questions answered. If you haven't, well, let's see if I can make this interesting for you. Let's learn about the major physical features of India and their formation. When we look all around us, the common things that we see are rocks and soil. You must have noticed that there are different types of rocks. Some are hard, like the marble, which have been used for making the Taj Mahal, while others are very soft, like the soapstone, which is used to make talcum powder. Rocks play a very important role in soil formation. The color of the soil is different in different places. Now, why is that exactly? This is because they are formed from different rocks in different ways. Speaking of formations, did you know that India's landscape formation took place during different geological periods? A number of processes such as weathering, erosion and deposition are responsible for the formation and modification of the landscape that we see all around us today. Now this has been explained by earth scientists who have worked on theories like the theory of plate tectonics, which is based on certain evidences. Now according to the theory of plate tectonics, the crust, which is the upper layer of the earth, has been formed out of seven major and some minor plates. The movement of these plates result in building up of stresses within the plates and the continental rocks above, leading to folding, faulting and volcanic activity. Now these plate movements are broadly classified into three types. They come towards each other and form a convergent boundary by colliding and crumbling or sliding under one another. Or a transform boundary by moving horizontally past each other. Sometimes they move away from each other and form a divergent boundary. It is the result of these movements of these plates that the position and size of the continents has changed over millions of years. Let's see how they affected India. Earlier, India, Australia, South Africa, South America and Antarctica were a single landmass called the Gondwana land. The peninsula region was the oldest part of this landmass, Gondwana land. Gondwana land was split into a number of pieces by the conventional currents. The Indo-Australian plate was moved towards the north where it collided with a much larger Eurasian plate. The sedimentary rocks had collected in the geosyncline. A geosyncline is a large-scale depression in the Earth's crust containing a very thick deposit. These geosynclines were known as tethys. The collision resulted in the folding of these rocks and thus the mountain system of Western Asia and Himalayas was formed. But mountains don't always remain at a constant height. They keep expanding and growing due to plate tectonics. They can get higher or lower depending on how these plates move. If a mountain's height increases, the chances of snowfall at the top might increase. To whereas, if they decrease in height, the amount and rate of snowfall might also decrease. Now, as the Himalayas were formed out of the Tethys Sea and the northern flank of the peninsula plateau settled, a large basin was created. This was filled with sediments deposited by the rivers that were flowed from the mountains from the north and from the peninsula plateau in the south. The deposits of extensive alluvial soil formed a flat land that led to the formation of the northern plains of India. So the plains were formed much later. Just like humans, land masses also have age. 
The Peninsular Plateau is one of the most ancient land masses of the Earth's surface and is supposed to be one of the most stable land blocks. The Himalayas and the Northern Plains, on the other hand, are more recently formed land masses and have an unstable zone. They represent a very young topography that comprises of high peaks, deep valleys and fast flowing rivers. While the northern plains are formed of the alluvial deposits that were brought down by the flowing rivers, the peninsular plateau is formed by igneous and metamorphic rocks and is characterized by gently rising hills and wide valleys. That seems a little too much to take, doesn't it? Let's make it a little more simpler and take a more detailed look at the major physiographic divisions of India. The Himalayan mountains, the northern plains, the peninsular plateau, the Indian desert, the coastal plains and the islands. So, these are the six major physical features of India. In the next few videos, we will dive into more details. Tutamate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on Apple App Store or Google Play Store.